Good morning everybody and magandang araw ng Sabado po sa inyong lahat. Happy Sabbath. Evangelism is a word that can strike fear into our hearts and we feel like we don't know what we're going to do or how we're going to do it. We have nightmares on uh, about going door to door and we certainly don't feel uh, qualified to lead a Bible study. After all, we didn't go to, um, to Bible college or so. There were reasoning goes. Yet, the Bible is pretty clear. We're supposed to tell others. And in Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 19 to 20 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I'll be with you even to the end of age. Now, that puts us in a tough spot where we're supposed to tell others yet we're scared or we feel very unqualified to do what God has asked us to do and when we're scared we we become paralyzed with fear and we never do anything and that is not due to the lack of knowledge about the subject matter it's not the knowledge thing it's the fear thing. In 1993, Barna, the research uh, organization, partnered with Lutheran Hour Ministries to research reasons why people did or did not engage in, in, um, in intentional outreach. While a lot has changed since the initial study, so 25. Um, years later in 2018 they asked some um, follow-up questions to see if um, if we still talk about our faith in a culture that is more digital secular and contested than ever um, two points that we want to share from the study just um, just 10% of Christians in 1993 who had shared uh, their faith um, agreed with the statement converting people to Christianity is uh, the job of the local church as opposed to the job of the individual like ourselves okay uh, 25 25 years later in 2018 nearly 3 in 10 Christians um, who had a conversation about their faith say say that evangelism is the church's um, local responsibility and that's nearly a threefold increase the second point is that is in 1993 89% uh, of the Christians who have shared their faith agreed that it was the responsibility of every Christian to, and that makes sense 10% said it was the churches and 90% said it was uh, their own but in 2018 only 64% uh, say that it was their responsibility that's 25 point drop and this change could be a result of many factors including a poor ecclesiology and ecclesiology uh, is a two dollar word for uh, a study of the church stuff or it could be personal and cultural barriers or sharing our faith right to sharing our faith so uh, basically more Christians think that it's not their responsibility to share their faith and to bring people to Jesus it's the church's responsibility and of course they convince 
conveniently forget that they are the church and there's no magical entity called church that will do this without their involvement and maybe they think that it's the pastor's job and not their job now as you know at Fraser Valley Seventh-day Adventist Church we promote a lot of friendship and evangelism and what does that mean that means that we have events uh, when when we aren't in COVID that we design to to easily allow us to invite some of the friends to church things like a small groups party movie nights ice skating uh, bowling um, hikes etc and all these things that we do and there are ways to invite our friends to to come and get to know us and hopefully become interested in knowing Jesus but that's not the only way to do evangelism and what happens when there is COVID and you can't have movie nights and ice skating to invite your friends to see there's something that it also generally uh, called it's personal evangelism personal evangelism where people share their faith with others and uh, there are many ways to do that and some are probably better than others and some are um, probably simply different than others and maybe more subjective to what to what it fits us best and I've seen all kinds of aids and maybe we should even call them gimmicks or uh, gimmicks to help to share your faith and to draw pictures and then show them how salvation works right you can draw pictures and and then show them how salvation works you can keep a card in your wallet that you you put out and walk through through it with people and that's even and there's even one that I can't remember anymore it's something to do with your your fingers and the finger and and this finger meant something and this finger meant something and and some somehow you you use your fingers to tell to tell the story about salvation something uh, the story of salvation and and I guess these are okay there's nothing wrong with them but it needs to be more natural if you're the kind of person who was always uh, headed to the whiteboard to draw a picture and you're always reaching for a piece of paper to to draw your ideas then and that would that that method could be very natural for you but if you're not the person who draws it's not going to work and obviously there's some very wrong ways to share your faith uh, you don't uh, you don't get up in somebody's grill and uh, shouting and yelling that's just a bad idea there's a story told and I believe this could be a true story as far as I know how a church church in the south and the preacher had been talking about the importance of sharing your faith and he had been having a whole series on on really driving home the point on how people to share their faith and there was a young man in the audience and I don't know the politically correct term uh, for his condition anymore but we used to say that he was slow-witted and you know uh, life was 
was hard for him and he was just a little slow but he took the message to heart and he decided that he was going to tell his friend who was who was a skeptic maybe even uh, an atheist about Jesus so he walked up to his uh, to his friend and he said do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and the guy said I do not and then the boy looked at him and said well then I guess you're gonna go to hell and he turned and walked away and the man was just left in shock uh, he was left in shock and what do you say and and the, the starkness and the and the bluntness of that young man that young man's message made an impact in the guy's life and later on he became a Christian now I'm not suggesting that you should tell your friends to go to hell what I'm suggesting is that God will use the best efforts no matter how flawed or imperfect it is to reach the people that he sends you the guy probably wouldn't have responded to a different kind of approach but the starkness of the bluntness of that approach worked for him did God know that of course he did now there's nothing wrong with using an aid but you don't have to do that that way just be yourself be willing to share your life uh, your life your church and your beliefs and whenever the conversation seems to go that way God will use your best effort here are a few pointers to help number one number one um, don't be afraid it's easy to be afraid what will people think about me what what if they don't agree what if I offend somebody or the big one what if they say no nobody wants to be rejected that's why high school is such a pain in the neck and because we're trying to find somebody that like us and we um, we don't want to be rejected we want to be in the group and we want to be cool and we want to have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and we don't like rejection uh, no one wants to pour out their heart to someone or invite a friend or something and have them say no to their face but we have to realize our job as Christians our purpose given to us by Christ is not to make people believe but we can do but we can do that um, I can't make you believe something but I can tell you the facts or you can make an informed decision I can tell you what God has done in my life and I can show you the path and um, the path I have taken and why I chose it but just because we can't make someone believe doesn't excuse us from telling people about Jesus let's look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 to 19 I have the New Century version all this is from God through Christ God made peace between us and himself and God gave us the work of telling everyone about the peace that we can have with him God was with Christ making peace between the world and himself in Christ God did not hold the world guilty of its sins and he gave us his message of peace and like you hear and I like you to hear it in Tagalog okay in Tagalog too ang Dios ay gumawa ng lahat ng ito sa papamagitan ni Kristo ibinilang niya tayo sa papamagitan ni Kristo ibinilang niya tayong mga kaibigan at hindi na kaaway 
at pinili ni kami upang ang iba pang mga tao ay maging kaibigan ni rin niya. At ibig sabihin sa pamamagitan ni Kristo, ang mga tao'y ibinilang ng Diyos na kaibigan at nilimot na niya ang kanilang mga kasalanan. At kami naman ay inatasan niya ang ipamalita ito. See, God gave us God gave us this work and to be honest some days I wonder why dogs are more obedient than people well my son's dog Rufus sometimes is and maybe your dog is too but you know they're pretty obedient but why not have them spread the gospel but God gave it to us it's something that we're supposed to do not something we're suggested to do it's what we do and we're part of the family of God and it's normal it, it's normal to be afraid even the disciples are afraid but Jesus does not allow being afraid an excuse right the story comes from the Bible and it takes place the day Jesus rose from the dead and remember he is crucified on Friday and rested on the Sabbath and Sunday morning he arises and this takes place that Sunday evening and this is John chapter 20 verses 19 to 21 and it said on the evening on the first day of the week when the disciples were together with the, the, the doors locked for fear when the disciples were together with the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you and after he said this he showed them his hands and his side and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord and again Jesus said peace be with you and the Father has sent me I am sending you they were in a locked room because they were scared of admitting they were Christians. They didn't use that term, but you know, they didn't want to be known as followers of Jesus. Jesus had been crucified two days ago, but on Sunday he appeared and he didn't give them any time to feel better about it. He says, as God sent Jesus, so he, has, he was sending them. Uh, they didn't have time to get over their fear but what if they really needed to take time to get over their fear maybe attend a workshop read a book watch a YouTube video would uh, would we actually do it or will we just be scared of doing that because then we'd have to share our faith see sometimes we don't need a lot of instructions we just we just need to do it we can learn all we want about riding a bike or snowboarding but at some point you gotta hop on and start pedaling or heading up the slopes by yourself no matter how scared you are that maybe you'd love riding bikes or skiing you'd start telling everyone about your adventures riding bikes or snowboarding or whatever it is because uh, number two we share what we're excited about it's easy to share about Jesus if we're excited about him when you're excited about something you want to share when you're enthusiastic about it it shows when the Canucks were on their way to winning the semifinals I forgot what year that was uh, there were lots of Canucks colors being worn people were excited you could see it and and as we had Super Bowl about a couple weeks ago you'll see fans uh, for those teams showing their support people you never knew were a fan all of a sudden wearing team colors right it just happens people are excited and what they want and what they want to show it how many times has someone shared a recommendation um, with you probably a lot 
they told you about a great place to get a haircut they shared about a great restaurant or maybe it's it was an awesome movie or a TV show we'd love to share about things we're excited about and if you're excited about Jesus you will want to share about him you know what I found in my personal experience is that people usually don't freak out when you share about Jesus or your faith they listened especially when you can tell them what the Bible really says as you know there is a lot of misinformation out there and I just intentionally look for opportunities to send the record straight sometimes they ask questions in Jeremiah 20 verse 9 it says sometimes I say to myself I will forget about the Lord I will not speak anymore in his name and then his message becomes like a burning fire inside me deep within my bones I get tired of holding it inside of me and finally I cannot hold it in if you're excited about God um, where you worship him people will know people will ask to get people to Jesus they need to be uh, they need to get an invite right they need to be invited to get people to Jesus they need to be invited right so number three be ready and invite someone people just don't magically decide to follow Jesus I can guarantee that almost every single person watching this uh, I can't say everyone but almost everyone were in some way or somehow invited to church by a friend or a parent I don't know but somehow you were invited in the Gospels we have 40 stories of Jesus healing people of those 40 34 people had someone bring them to Jesus by their friends or their acquaintances some needed to invite them or if uh, so if when Jesus was on earth and the people could just walk up to him and talk to him people needed to be invited why do we think it's different now according to gray matter research uh, 17 million Americans who don't regularly attend church visited a church website in the past year I want you to think about that 17 million and I'm sure this applies to Canadians too they don't go to church but they went to a church website and some are searching for church hours and programs and 26% or streaming video another 20 uh, 26 percent are streaming audio and 17 million people chances are uh, you and I know some of those people and they are waiting for some to invite them Jesus disciples even needed to be invited to follow him and work with him and in John chapter 1 verses 35 to 42 says the next day John was there again with two of his of his disciples and he saw Jesus passing by and he said look look the Lamb of God and then the two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus turning around and Jesus saw them following and asked what do you want they said rabbi which means teacher where are you staying come he replied and you will see so they went and saw where he was staying and they spent the day with him and it was about four in the afternoon and Andrew Simon Peter's brother Andrew Simon's Peter brother was one of the two who had heard 
what John had said and who had followed Jesus the first thing uh, the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him and uh, uh, we, we have found the Messiah that is the Christ and he brought him to Jesus even Peter the main disciple the one on whom the whole institution of the church is founded he had to be invited by his friend in, in this case his brother to meet Jesus he didn't magically decide to do it one day he didn't wake up one morning and go looking for Jesus Andrew had to tell Simon about Jesus and Andrew had to be told and then Andrew had to invite Peter to meet Jesus and Jesus his whole purpose in coming was not to deal with people who are already a part of uh, institutionalized religion he didn't come to fix things in house his whole purpose was to come and offer forgiveness and a relationship with his father and to invite people into a relationship Matthew 9 verses uh, 12 to 13 new century version says when Jesus heard them he said it's not the healthy people who need a doctor but but the sick go and learn what this means I want kindness more than I want animal sacrifices I did not come to invite good people but to invite sinners Jesus came to invite people into a relationship with him people want to be invited you don't just show up to a party if you're not invited unless you're really rude right why would the church be any different invite people to come with you and even when you can't meet in person due to COVID you can still invite them to watch the service right uh, sometimes our friends come to to us to ask questions and they sometimes uh, come to you because they trust you and we might be tempted to warm our way out of it and say I'll introduce you to the pastor and you know but they came to you because they trust you let me give an example suppose you come into a large uh, into a, a large amount of money and inheritance uh, and so and so died and left you a bunch of money by the way if there's anybody watching there that's in line for a large inheritance let me know because I want to be friends with you anybody in my family dies I'm getting bills but you know suppose you got this family member who dies and leaves you a lot of money and you want to do something intelligent with the money you want to invest it and have a retirement and not just blow it on cars and houses or whatever so what are you likely to do go see some kind of investment bank or uh, something right um now suppose your best friend is an investment banker uh, wouldn't you go see your friend would you go see some strange investment banker you never met that you picked uh, off the internet would who would you go see your friend right now I might go see the other guy too to compare notes but you would definitely go see your friend why because you trust your friend and when people come to talk to you about God we're coming to 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 uh, they're coming to talk to you because they trust you they don't trust me they don't trust the pastor so-and-so they don't trust anybody else they trust you and sometimes we want to duck and dodge and say why don't you come to church I'll introduce you to somebody that can uh, that will have an answer for you that's not what they want they want to hear from you and they trust you 
uh, they have a relationship with you and if they are coming to see you it's very likely that God sent them right um, first Peter 3 15 to 16 says but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but this but to to this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that for those who speak maliciously against your good behavior and Christ may be ashamed of their slander unfortunately as Christians we read at first part of uh, verse 15 and stop and say well I'm ready to give a, re a reason why someone asked me that someone asked me I got the, this big Bible and I can read to him and if they don't like it you know this is what the Bible says no we got to read that next sentence which is with gentleness and respect be kind when you act in that way that is kind and loving when you care about people even people who talk about you or tell you know they will be embarrassed that they slandered you we are here to help people come closer to Jesus and to help people do that uh, we need to tell them and invite them to have what we have something that I hope that you're excited to have but we need to tell our friends they won't just magically know what we're about or show up for the worship service Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says how then can they call on the one they have not believed in how can they believe in the one who they have not heard and how can they hear without someone preaching to them people need to hear first and that's where we come in I don't know where you are with Jesus he's always willing to start a relationship with you or to deepen your your relationship but starting is easy we try so hard to make the gospel message complicated but it isn't believing just means that you believe there's a living God and he wants you to spend eternity with him and he sends his son Jesus to make a way for that to happen and all you have to do is believe and start living your life for him it's that simple this week why don't you pray that God will put you in a position where you can share your faith or invite someone to church let's pray Heavenly Father thank you so much for these examples you you've given us Lord the stories that we have to encourage us so we're not afraid to we're willing to invite people we're willing to talk about what we believe Lord not because we have all the answers not because we're smarter than anybody else Lord but we know what you have done in our lives help us to be willing to share that Lord help us to be brave enough this week to, to pray for somebody to be put in our path so that we can talk to them about you Lord some of those 17 million people that are waiting for somebody to invite them help us to those help us to meet those people we ask that you be with us this week Lord to keep us safe to bring us back again in Jesus name Amen thank you for joining us this Sabbath God bless and have a great week and see you again next Sabbath <laughs>